Where to start? Where to start? <laughs> um, I would like to invite uh, my fellow speakers, if they would like to know what's going on, um, to visit children who've been shot in the head by Israeli forces. I was there. I saw what was going on. Uh, I, I assume you have not, because if you had seen it, you wouldn't have just made the racist statements that you chose to make. Uh, Israel and Palestine. 37 of them have condemned Israel for human rights abuses. There's a reason for that. Um, if we're going to cite the media, let me give a few, a few specific ex examples and a few facts. The San Francisco Chronicle, which said we um, is quite typical. We did a study of how it had covered the deaths of children during the first six months of the current uprising. We looked at how it covered these deaths in headlines or first paragraphs for the whole first half year of the uprising. We found that they had covered 150% of Israeli children's deaths and 5% of Palestinian children's deaths. Uh, citing USA Today to me is not a convincing citation. <laughs> Human Rights Watch has a few examples here that are interesting to read as does F Physicians for Human Rights USA. Here's one quote. Physicians for Human Rights USA says, PHR's analysis of fatal gun wounds in Gaza reveals that approximately 50% were to the head. The high proportion of fatal head wounds suggests that given broad rules of engagement, soldiers are specifically aiming at people's heads. Let's read a quote from BBC, July 5th, 2002. The BBC has obtained video footage which appears to show an incident in the West Bank city of Jenin two weeks ago in which two Palestinian children were killed by Israeli tank fire. The footage shows a tank firing the first of two shells at close range at a group of civilians including two children who were killed who are running away. Let's read from Human Rights Watch 2002. Eight Palestinian men, including a 14-year-old boy, were taken from their homes and placed on a balcony overlooking Palestinian fighter positions while IDF soldiers fired from behind the men. In another case, IDF, that's Israeli soldiers, placed a 65-year-old Palestinian woman on the exposed roof of her home during a gun battle. If we are going to talk about human shields, these are the human shields. Let's go to an Israeli source. I'm sure those are of significance to you. Um, Haaretz, February 10th, 2002. An 11-year-old boy was shot in the head from short range while fleeing after he threw stones at Israeli soldiers who were posted at the roadblock next to the refugee camp where he lives. A 15-year-old boy threw stones at a tank that was besieging the headquarters of a national leader. A soldier shot him in the head from short range. A soldier in an undercover unit gave hot pursuit to a boy of about nine who had been throwing stones, shot him from behind, and killed him. This from Haaretz. <coughs> Moving on. Uh, let's consider Yasser Arafat. Let's consider that two people were given the Nobel Peace Prize, Yasser Arafat and Shimon Perez. None of the committee members have said anything, have mentioned having had any second doubts, any second thoughts about Yasser Arafat. Let's see what they said about Shimon Perez, if I can now find this. Two of them, uh, one was from, uh, one of them had been on the committee for quite a long time. Let me see. Here it is. Regarding Shimon Perez, this is Oslo Bishop Gunnar Stalset. Quote, as foreign minister, Shimon Perez fully and wholly supports the warning that Ariel Sharon has initiated. I cannot hide my deep disappointment, the warring, sorry. I cannot hide my deep disappointment and despair. 
Let's read what another committee member said about Nobel laureate Simon Perez. Quote, I wish it was possible that we could recall the prize. What is happening today in Palestine is grotesque and unbelievable. Perez is responsible as part of the government. He has expressed his agreement with what Sharon is doing. When we are talking about electing war criminals, terrorists, let us look at the president, the prime minister of Israel, at Ariel Sharon, who was found guilty by his own parliament of massacres of men, women, and children in Lebanon, who was the leader of forces that bombed, invaded, and killed close to 20,000 Lebanese civilians in 1982. That began his career in the early 1950s, killing civilians in the Gaza Strip at Kibia. This is a man who was found guilty by his own government of massive acts of terrorism, and he is prime minister. <laughs>